The latest one, Rob, ESPN NFL insider Jeff Darlington on the Adam Schefter podcast just a couple days ago, he said this, I put the Titans and Raiders right now as the front runners for Tom Brady's services. Tennessee has to be considered one of the bright spots when you look at what Tom Brady is looking for in free agency. Whether it is the team itself and what they possess personnel-wise, whether it is the ability to potentially collaborate with the head coach and have some say in both game planning and personnel, I quite frankly think the Tennessee Titans make a lot of sense for Tom Brady. He doubled down on that yesterday on Golick and Wingo and basically said, it's time, this is a direct quote, it's time to wrap our heads around the idea of Tom Brady leaving New England because it is a very real possibility. You think it's more off, more likely than not that he's no longer with the Patriots. What do you think, Rob, about Tom Brady in a Tennessee Titans uniform? I don't like it at all. I, I just, I'm, I'm not so sure. I, I get it. You're always looking to, uh, you feel like you have a team in place and you think you can go and upgrade, right, the, the quarterback position. Is that what right. they think, right? Right. We saw this before. Didn't we see this movie before, Chris? Did we see it no, in Minnesota? I, I, uh, first of all, I, I think Minnesota's not – they're in pretty good shape. No, now, I'm but, not complaining if I'm Minnesota. But they, I'm just saying, but that was the plan. They, they had they had a uh, a nice run with Case Keenum. and all One they, year. That's that's all it takes, Chris. Did You're you just think trying Case to win. Keenum was going to do that consistently? Well, all I He's know is that I, guy, I, wasn't, you know I that. wasn't sure that uh, Kirk Cousins was either. I mean, I wasn't sold that Kirk Cousins was the answer. And for most of his – other than winning that playoff game, and Chris, he made a big throw and a, a touchdown and right. won the game. But other than that, his time in Minnesota has mostly been disappointing. Uh, I, I I think he's been pretty good there. I mean, like you said, he proved finally he could win the big game. And I know that doesn't fully get the monkey off his back. It was better, but I'm just saying, I don't think that it was. They thought they had an awesome defense, which they did, right, the Vikings. Right. All they had to do was, was sprinkle in – a a better quarterback, add water and stir, and they were going to win a championship. And instead, the cake wasn't wasn't done in the middle. They didn't stick it with a toothpick to make sure it was cooked all the way through. All right, to your point, and I don't know crickets. Kawhi, what I'm whatever just you want to get from that. that I don't way, know what to do with isn't that. Isn't that the way I, you bake I mean, a cake? Yeah, I, I don't know where that. Chris, came you never from. baked the cake. Tell before? that on the Golden Girl. Save that stuff for the Golden Girl. That, cruise, those are right? my those are my pickup <laughs> lines about baking the cake Speaking and sticking up up up. Are you gonna? Why don't you do a stand up on the Golden Girls cruise? I might. You know what? It's funny. Is I've started to think about it, and my life, and some of the stuff that's happened. I think that's going to be the stand up. I, so I've got on it. the Golden Girls cruise, or no, no, no. I'm just period. I'm just oh, mean no, in that, general. That's the way you should go. Yeah, I'm gonna go that. You way. got a lot of stories. I mean, you obviously, you know, covered sports at the highest level. I've been on plane situations, make you all unique. kinds. Yeah, yeah. I think that could be good. Cause your jokes, just your straight up jokes, they're not funny. I mean, ninety eight percent of the time, I have not some funny, funny ones. I just stories, can't say it you on the have air. Some good stories. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna do this. I got a couple. <laughs> I got some material. I'm ready to go. I'll try it out on y'all, and then when I get back from the cruise, and then if it's good, and you guys think it's it's good, and I'm not gonna lose my my gigs over it, then well, I does think that we'll mean do that. You got you gonna go back to the dirty stuff? No, I said nope. It won't That's be the only reason you say you could lose your gig. No, but I'm just saying I still want to make sure I'm not offending anybody because you know the world we live in. I'm just not right. doing it. That's not okay. going to be the reason why you're working with uh, Mike Harmon uh, coming out. <laughs> All right, but anyway, back to the uh, Titans. Here's the thing, Rob, and you kind of hit it on the head. You said, okay, Kirk Cousins, for the most part, yeah, he had a nice season this year, you know, rallied them to the playoffs. After and, they called them out, remember, win. early right, on? Right. They, they but a lot, of that, a lot of that was the play calling, though. You know, they were heavy run, and they had a really great running game, but they opened it up after that, and, and Cousins delivered. But the point is this, you're kind of saying you are what you are. And Ryan Tannehill, as great as he was in the second half of the season. Comeback player of the year. Yeah, and I'm not saying, look, we've seen guys put it together, you know, after six, seven years. So it's not unprecedented that Ryan Tannehill last year could be the beginning 
of a really nice career, and the maybe type he of fi- career people expected, right? You know what? Maybe he turned the corner. Just like you said, some people are late bloomers, Chris. Everybody doesn't come out of the gate and it's Patrick Mahomes. That's just not most people right. don't do it like that. That takes them a and, while. And that, that was they, almost not quite as long as he took, but the norm was a few years right. up until recently. And then the other part is, is the team and, and the offensive coordinator, does that does that work for you? Do you know what I mean? Am I yep. in the right offense? Am I? Do I have the right coach? Uh, do I have the complimentary running back that opens it up for me? Right? He had Adam Gase in Miami, and we saw the Jets' offense wasn't the juggernaut. They didn't, right. u- they didn't utilize right. the running back. All of a sudden, you get a, a big-time running back in Derrick Henry, Chris, and what do you have? It opens up for Tannehill all of a sudden. Here's the thing I'll say, Rob. Uh, if, I, if you give me a choice for one year of Ryan Tannehill with that team or Tom Brady, I'm sorry. I'm taking Tom Brady. I'm taking Tom Brady. That team, we I've said, I don't know if you believe it, but I've said he can't carry mediocre talent at 43 anymore, but give him some talent, whether it's in New England or elsewhere, and I think he can get the job done. Obviously, Derrick Henry is just what the doctor ordered in terms of a running game. And then A.J. Brown had a nice year as a rookie. He's, I only expect improvement from him. You know, so they obviously elsewhere, they got a nice squad. So I, I got to admit, if I'm Tennessee and you said it, it's one-year deals for most of these NFL teams, one-year plans. If I got a chance to go get Tom Brady, plug him into what I have, then I'm doing it. Here's my only reservation, and this goes for any team, especially a new team for Tom Brady. I would be more than hesitant to give him three years. I'd be hesitant even to give him two. I If I gave him two years, I would want like a team option after the first year. And I'd even be willing to give him a player option too. But I, I cannot, I would be hesitant to commit to a 43-year-old guy Two, certainly three years. Because, Rob, we said it before, Peyton Manning, his last year in Denver, in D- Denver, he was horrible. Nine touchdowns, 17 He picks. lost his job during that year, if you remember, right. to, uh, what was that, the tall guy? Uh, Osweiler. Right. Brock, Brock Osweiler. Osweiler, right. And, yes, they won the Super Bowl, but it was to a large degree in spite of him. And I, we give him credit, but still, we know what it was. A year earlier, Rob, he was spectacular. 39 touchdowns, about 4,700 yards passing. He looked like Peyton Manning. And all of a sudden, overnight, he fell off. At some point, Tom Brady, as much as I like him, he can post all the inspirational messages, all the motivational tweets and posts on Instagram he wants. Or drink all the avocado juice and eat the kale ice cream, whatever it is, if I got it mixed up. He can do all that at some point, soon, one year, two years, three years, four months, whatever it might be. At some point soon, he's going to fall off and he's going to fall off badly. And I would be hesitant. I would be, when I'm looking at Tom Brady right now, I would be, we on one year deals from now on, Doc. Yeah, but the only thing is, if you really believe he is and – And remember, you're Tennessee. You haven't won Jack. It ain't the kind of place that's easy to lure people. I'm just saying in general, you got to pay sometimes, Chris, the bad team tax. And I know they were a good team and they made a playoff run. If you want to call it the bad city tax or whatever it is. Well, Nashville's up and coming. Yeah, but you might still, it it ain't the major cities that we're talking about, but you might have to pay to get Tom Brady more than you might anybody else. Do you know what I mean for him? Well, I actually think, Rob, so any I, team, I think, and I and I get this if I'm Tom Brady, because, look, he don't want to leave. But I get that if I think for him to leave New England, unless they just kick him out the door, that another team is going to have to offer him multiple years. Like, I don't think he's leaving New England for a one-year deal. I, and that's the quandary in this. No, but I agree. But you have to really feel like, I know we. I know under normal circumstances you would only have a one year or something and 
But in right. this I case, in order to from, get them, you, you, you're you, probably right. You got to pay. You got we we we're trying to do something here. This guy comes with all the hardware and all that. We got to give him two years salary and hope. That we win the championship the first year and the other would just be bonus. Do you know what I mean? No, that, I get. I that's think, how you would look I, I at it. I think you're right. I think he's not going to settle for less. No. And you're right. I, so that. But let me ask you this, because you said when we did, hosted Undisputed last week, you were. It was a similar question. Okay, in, in Tennessee, it's Tom Brady or Ryan Tannehill. We posed it in Dallas. Dak Prescott or Tom Brady? You said Brady. You would take Brady if you were Dallas. Would you want to give him two years? I, or would I, you- I would give him two years because, I, I, I mean, you have a d- decision. that The difference is, you obviously, Chris, you have a young quarterback who's the future. So it just depends on really where you are. If you're the Dallas Cowboys and you say, dude, you know what? We're, we're not going to be able to pay everybody. We're going to lose people. We, we just If we don't do this in two years, it ain't happening. Then, you know, then we're going to lose everybody that we have uh, uh, put together. So if it's if it's like that, where you really believe that uh, in two years this is all going to come undone, Chris, then maybe you have to bite the bullet and say, we haven't won a championship in 25 years. We got enough players to get it done, and we can make this thing work. I'd rather give it a shot with Tom Brady for two years, uh, and and we have to live with it. I hear you. And look, it I would don't be a think- big decision. Trust yeah. me. I don't think Brady will fall off next year, like, you know, a major fall off. He's already diminished a little bit. We've seen that. Um, but imagine if you give him, say, two, like the Raiders reported offer, two years, 60 million. Well, they gave a coach 100 million. So if I'm Brady and I just want dollars, the Raiders, are pro- you probably could get it from the Raiders. Well, I think you're getting that from where, if you go anywhere, I think you're getting that type of money. Um, but imagine if he comes in and, and, and I, Say through no fault of his own, but Father Time has put down the hammer, and he just don't have it anymore. Now you got two years, sixty million dollars locked up in a bad quarterback. It's not going to be pretty. So I get you're right. I don't think Brady's leaving New England for a one year deal. You're going to have to pay extra years if you want to get him. But it is a risk, man. It is a risk. Oh, it's a big risk. It's a it's a crapshoot. And if you choose wrong, Chris, you could have a championship or you could set your franchise back five years. You know what right. I mean? That's really – so is it worth the risk? You got to say, all right, let's take a look at him. Let's really see what he did last year. Was it him? You know what I mean? Or was it oh, the yeah. lack of weapons? You know, and you, and you got to make a decision. Yeah, we see that he's not that good, but let's be honest, he don't have anybody. Whatever it is, you have to convince yourself of that. Yeah, and if I'm New England, it's easier for me to do that than if I'm somebody else. Because if New England, if he falls off, you still got all those championships. He's still going to be beloved. You know what I mean? Right. So it's interesting. 877-99 on Fox. Your turn to weigh in. Should the Tennessee Titans have any interest in Tom Brady being their new quarterback? We'll continue the conversation with you next. Let's hear what you guys have to say. All right, we got the president of the Tom Brady fan club checking in. Trucker Don from Beantown, from Boston. What's up, Trucker Don? Nice. I love it. There it is. Thank you guys for taking my call. I always appreciate you your time, so thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, I uh, missed a couple of your shows last week, but thank God you guys do a great uh, uh, podcast, so thanks for that. Thank you. And... Uh, I, like I said, I missed a couple of shows, but one show I did catch was uh, you asking when they were going to do Metamucil Night down at uh, <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> and and lucky, lucky for you, I just got the news that they're going to do Metamucil Night the same night they're giving out tickets to the Golden Girls. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, Trucker Don, you know you want to go on that Golden Girls cruise with me. I'm telling you. I'm old enough. You are, I'm old enough, though. See, Trucker I can Don get away with it. always comes up with great jokes. That is. You got to get some. You need to have him write some of your You material. might have to write when I do my stand-up. Wait till I do the stand-up, uh, Trucker Don. Wait. <laughs> Love to be. The, I would. Oh, I could heckle from the front row, and, <laughs> and, and that would be a blast. That would be awesome. But uh, as far as Brady going to the Titans, uh, if, if he doesn't go to the uh, back to New England, 
which I am getting more and more of a feeling he's not going to. If he does go to the Titans, it would be the same move that the Denver Broncos pulled a couple of years ago when it worked out golden for them. I think that Brady is ahead of Peyton Manning at this point in his career. Oh, yeah, because really? Peyton May had a fuse, uh, hey, but he had a fuse he back. There. You right, know what right. I mean? I mean, right. his first and year there, I he say, was phenomenal. Uh, absolutely. He he did, but he deteriorated quickly. I, yep. You know, everybody saw that. And, and I think that if they, if they put Brady in at this point, just his adjustments that he makes at the line of scrimmage, you know, would just be all all a team that, that is that talented would need. That would all be right. the difference. All right, Don. No, look, I appreciate love you. It for a year. We'll see if it, it would last longer than it's, that. It's, but it's going to cost you two years. That's right. the problem Chris has. Uh, Kevin in Wisconsin, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Kev? Hey, hey, how you doing, Chris? Uh, doing what's great. Up, man? Well, you, you guys kind of defeated your own argument when you said uh, that Peyton had to fuse back. And that's the reason why the second year – he fell off and deteriorated so quickly. I, I'm just, I'm just. Well, it was really the fourth, the fourth year in Denver. He well, had three really good years there. But, but I'm just saying, I'm, I, I just can't believe that you guys would think that all of a sudden Brady's going to fall off after next year. It's not that. It, it, I think that Peyton Manning wasn't it. 43, though. I mean, right. they, they, it, Peyton Manning wasn't never that have old. Seen this. He's already yeah, defied father time more Pey- than anybody else. Chris, I think Peyton Manning was, what, 38 or so? He wasn't Peyton 40. Manning's last year, he was 39. Yeah, he wasn't he 43. Was he, was, he had three great seasons in Denver, up 36 to 38 years old, and at 39, he just fell off the cliff. But, my, but see, this is where I'm coming from. When you have an elite uh, quarterback, I think that you should be more so comparing – Brady to Rodgers to Drew Brees than to what happened with Peyton Manning. And the First reason all, why Rodgers didn't even Rodgers is like thirty six. Yeah, no, nah, he's not old. So we not he's not yeah, even I, in this discussion. Drew well, Brees I, reason, okay, Drew Brees is even younger. He's forty one. So for at some point it's coming. Wait, wait we haven't seen forty three is uncharted waters. Right. Let's just be honest. All right, uh, Ty in Los Angeles. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Ty? Nothing much. I'm a uh, longtime listener, first-time caller. My I'm man. Welcome, show. brother. Don't make it the last. That's right. We appreciate you. We love Even if getting... we shout you down, don't make it the last. That's right. Don't be mad. That's okay. All right. Lo- love you guys, man. But uh, to the point, I was living in Denver. I'm from Denver. So I was living in Denver when we got paid Manning and seeing those years where he was there, and he was great. That first. In the second year, he was phenomenal. He set all types of records. Yep. And then that that and we got spanked by the Seahawks. Uh, that first Super Bowl run we had with Peyton, and then going back when we faced Carolina, that season, I mean, he he just fell off like I couldn't believe. I mean, you, you just, it just was unseen. Nobody saw it coming. He fell off hard. So if I'm Tennessee, if I'm signing a guy who's already you know put, pushing the, pushing the limits of something we've never seen. I just think that's a risk that you really should not be taking, especially if you're going to shell out a lot of cash to bring this guy in. I, I'm with you. I totally agree. And look, I get it that if I knew I was definitely getting one great year, maybe I'm willing to go too. I don't even know that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's, put, age, he's, yeah. he's going, he's going further than we've seen any quarterback do it, and it's just, it's just, it's uncharted waters, and it's. If you're taking that type of risk and you're going to set your team back if it if it blows up and it doesn't work out, it's just I just don't think you should take that type of risk. Yeah, but if you think you could get a Super Bowl out of it, and that's really what it, most people are trying to do, let's do Isaac in California. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Isaac? Guys, thanks for taking the call. First time caller as well. I appreciate it. Wow, we love first time callers. Yes, we Very do. nice. Yes, sir. So I, I was born and raised in Nashville. I'm a diehard Titans fan. And my, my view on this is uh, we've been mediocre for far too long. This year was fantastic. I did love Ryan Tannehill. But come on, we're still talking about Tom Brady. And if there is a chance at a Super Bowl, even if there, we have to risk falling off as a Titans fan, I'm willing to take that risk. Uh, I mean, come on. Again, it's it's Tom Brady. Yes, Ryan Tannehill is great. Yes, I love him. Yes, I'll be okay if we don't get it. But come on, if we got that shot, 
we got to go for it. Got to go all in. No, nah, look, it makes sense. And here's the thing. You, you, Rob, we see it every year. We see teams come out of nowhere, make the playoffs, or and then fall off completely. Right. Every year there's, I mean, the Chargers, right? They were great two years ago. Last year they were a joke. When they went the to New England, they had a chance to go to the Super Bowl, and last yep. year they didn't make the playoffs. Remember Jacksonville a few years ago? Yep. They went up to New England too and, yep. and led by 10 points going into the fourth quarter. And then they, they fall off the next year. So – there's no guarantee that if you bring the Titans back as they are, that they're going to be that good. I mean, let's face it. They, they didn't have a great regular season as it was, even toward the end. They got hot in the playoffs. And so I get where the call is coming from, even if it is a risk to get Brady. Hey, it's a risk to just bring it back as it is because we may win six games if we do what, you know, come back with the same squad. But if you bring in Tom Brady – you know, the reward would be great as the risk would, but there's a potential great reward. So I get it. I get where they're coming from. 